hey, here's what I did to help you. So under the, um, I can't pronounce that in French, I spoke Spanish, copie de ciencias finis. Um, I created a points column here. Your points column was marking it so that if it was false, it would give them points, but I switched it into true instead and made it an array formula. That way you don't need to copy down the formula for every person. Okay, so as you get a new um, person, as you get a new entry and they mark the true button, then it'll give them those 10 points. Just so you see how that works. I'll go to the calendar, I'll pick one of these activities and then um, I'll click put in my username and then check and then submit and then back in the sheet okay you now have that right and it marks it with a 10. Uh, you already had the formula pretty much ready to go on your profiles to add these up I also changed that to become a, an array formula as well so that way it sums them up here so you see I have now 30 points and then this was the progress bar in your app, right? like so. However, your, you didn't have a filter on it. So on the progress bar component, I went to features and filtered it where the address is the signed in user. So then that way, if I'm viewing it as somebody else who hasn't earned those points yet, you see that they haven't earned anything yet. But when I am signed in as the user, it'll show my points. All right, so there's a good start for you. Uh, some recommendations that I have on all of this would be to first, in the calendar here, um, make it so that they don't need to type in their name. Maybe you can do a choice component with all of the people's names. For example, I could do a choice and then under the let's see is it under profiles they're num right and so here they're picking their name from a list instead and have that being sent that way they don't accidentally mistype their name and then suddenly it creates a new entry that doesn't get assigned to anybody that could be one way um, and the next thing i would suggest is that when you complete this assignment Right, uh, creating some sort of relation between this log and the calendar that would mark it as being done. So for example, I could do something like, let's see if I can find your app again. Let me see where all this data is living. So here we're not under the name of the assignment. We're not entering that in information here. Let's see, is it? Oh yeah, here. So whatever the au menu du jour. And is it under the calendar? Au menu du jour? Is that correct? Is that the same thing? I'm pretty sure. Okay, so then what we can do is in your app, you can create a relation in the calendar. We'll say relate to log. Creating a relation where the menu du jour matches the values in the copies here. And we're going to match multiple. That way if, because uh, we're going to have multiple people complete that assignment. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the email address of those people. So we'll do email lookup. We'll call it a lookup. And we'll do relate to log with the email. So now we have a list of all the email addresses of the people that have completed that assignment. Let me try that again. So again, email, look up, relate to log, email, done. All right, so here now we have a list of all the email addresses of the people who have, create, who have already completed that assignment. All right, All right. Um, then what we can do is we can add, so what's the name of the, how many do you, is this the actual name of it? Repos, yeah. Repos, repos, okay. Maybe something like this we can do 
can add a little indicator. So we can call this like completed template where I'll create a template and we can do, um, let's get an emoji like that along with the name where name is the um, menu du jour. And then now we can do an if, so if completed. And we'll do an if then. So if that email address, the email lookup, is the signed in user, which means if they completed it, then we'll do the completed template. Otherwise, we'll do the regular one. Done. All right, so then back in your app, now instead of displaying this guy here, the Amini du jour, we can display the if completed. Oh, but you see, you have, you have different names because the names are the same. This, okay, so what's the... All right, so that logic works, but because your calendar events are named the same, um, it's not distinguishing it. So each of these need their own ID, their own unique ID. And so now instead of, and then you want to pass that unique ID to your log. Yeah, because this is looking for that same name. So in addition to all of this, you'll want to pass something called like, um, event ID and make sure that this event ID is being generated from the calendar. So for each of these uh, date entries, I guess you can maybe do it by date. So maybe the ID, because it's a daily event, right? So maybe your calendar, maybe your event ID is just this and this put together. Let's try that. All right, so no. So what we're gonna do is in this column, we're gonna do a new date or event ID template. So we'll do a template where you have the, um, the date and then the menu name. So D and then name, where you have the date and then the name. Done. Okay. And then in the form, here for example, I'm going to get rid of this and do just that drop down instead. Um, so then the special value here I'm going to pass the new event ID to oh, I didn't I need to refresh my sheet. <laughs> Okay, refreshed. Uh, is it not, where's it being sent to? Oh, it's the Anzi's feed. Okay, so I need to create it there. Yeah, um, just for best practice, you don't want this. You wanna have array formulas. I'll show you what that looks like here. So I need to do an event ID. Let's see. I don't know why really I have a copy here to begin with anyway, but okay. So event ID. Yeah, use array formulas. They're magic. All right, so event ID is now event ID. 
Okay, so now if I do my name, check, submit. I now have this event ID. Okay. Um, let's do an array formula here. So basically we want all of this plus the points, right? Here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid, if you wanna copy things in the app from one sheet to another, Uh, just use an, array, use an array ID or array formula. I'll say like equals array formula and then get the range. So I want all of that. All right, so A2 to E. So there's with this one formula, right, it'll input everything. And then as this gets changed, Right. If I just do some nonsense, something here, right? See, as this gets changed, that gets changed. Okay. All right. So now we have an event ID. Um, and so now what we'll do is link by the event ID instead of the actual just the name, which shouldn't be too difficult. So back in the calendar, we're going to change our relation relate to log here. Instead of doing it to here, what we'll do where the event ID matches the value in event ID. Done. So I should have one. And the event ID matches the copy and the event ID. So those should match. Let's see why it's not. So here I have this. 324 and there my calendar 324 so those are the same There we go, okay. All right. So I just need to do that if then again. All right, so if completed. All right, so if email lookup is the signed in user, then we'll do the template. Otherwise, we're going to do just the name. Ah, there we go. All right, so since I'm the only person who's completed that right now, I have a little checkbox. Everybody else doesn't. And again, I'm still displaying just this guy in my app. So in my calendar layout. Title will be if completed. When will be the date. Right. And so now, if it's been completed, they'll have a little green checkbox. And if they don't, then they won't. And you could even have it set so that, um, like here, if it's been completed, then this button doesn't get shown. And that's pretty easy to do. Uh, we can do something like, uh, we'll create a button. And you can say something like, you've completed this 
task. And we'll set the visibility what if the uh, email lookup is the signed in user, right? That means that they've already completed it. And we'll set the other button to if they aren't the signed in user. So if completed template, no, sorry, if email lookup is not the signed in user, right? So because I've already completed this, this task, I see this button. But if I go to a task I haven't completed yet, I'll see the original button. See that? And now we want this button to do nothing. Right now it'll actually do something. And so the little trick that we can do is create a blank button template. So we'll call it like blank button, blank button link or empty link. Where I was to a single value or a template value of just pound sign and so now we'll link to that as part of the button so if they've already completed the task then they'll go to the link and that link will be the empty link so now if they click the button nothing happens okay. whereas before if I go here and I choose me and then submit then I should see this turns green and I'll no longer be able to push the button. There we go. All right, so those are my recommendations. And if you need any help implementing this, just let me know. Hope you enjoyed.